Hey, welcome back to my shop again. I got a new cameraman today. He's my six-year-old best buddy. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to make a uh, white oak log. I mean, white oak bowl, I'm sorry. To make a white oak bowl out of this piece over here. Moving around here. Out of this piece, this is a piece of white oak uh, off a tree I had cut in the backyard. It's really big and heavy. And uh, what I've done is I have put a disc on it so I can go to the bandsaw and cut it out. Now this is extremely heavy. I'll show you. I'll put it on this scale right here you can see. Ah, that's wet. That bought about a 28 and a quarter pounds. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to the bandsaw. Alright, cut it off. Say hi to my best buddy. Hi. Boy, you, are you don't sound very happy. Aren't you happy to be here with Papa? What are we going to do now? Go swimming? Yes. All right. You got my whole head in it this time? All right. What I'm going to do now is try to cut around this. I've got a inch plate on, so it doesn't do curves very good. So I'm basically going to just wiggle her down until I get her where I want her. Okay. Good, All right, I got it whittled down. I don't see how much wood I cut off now. I'm going to wait again. Let's see what we got. Okay, we got 20 pounds. We had, oh, there's the We got almost 21. So I took 7 pounds off of that. It's still heavy as you know what. It may be a problem on this little leg. But we'll see. All right. All right, I got it. Like I said, I got it. It's all down where I want it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a face plate on it. I'm going to use this little one here, but I'm going to use long screws. So I've already got my center marked. So uh, I'll start screwing that in. All right, here we go. Okay, you make, okay keep, keep it on me now, okay? You got me? Keep it right here where I can see what, you do, what I'm doing. First, I'm going to just go ahead and put the face plate on here and mark it. Then I'm going to take a wood chisel and a mallet and I'm going to whittle it out a little bit. Just try to make me a flat here so that the face plate sits down fairly flat. This bowl I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to rough it out and I'm going to try to microwave it 15 seconds at a time. I don't want to lose my spot there. There it is. There. I don't want to lose that. Well, it probably wouldn't hurt none if I did. I can bring the center down just a little bit out of the ring here. Oops. Turn it over the right way. Are you still watching or are you all over the place? You can't be all over the place, buddy. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Keep watching. Put me in the camera, man. It don't do any good if I'm not in the camera. See what? Make sure I'm still in the center. Pretty good. Okay, that looks like it. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that centered. I'm gonna put one in here. Get another oil and I'll put it right in here. Now I'll drill and, and put my outside screws in. You still with me, buddy? Mm-hmm.
these are our deck screws, they're Torx head deck screws. Like I think I've told you before, that's about all I like to use. Don't tighten it all the way. this would uh, split, but I don't want to take a chance. Snug that one. Woo! When it does that, you know it's tight. All right. That's good. Turn it off. All right, I've run in 500, 507 RPM. And it's not wobbling too bad. I might even get a little more, but that's probably all I need. Starts to get a wobble right there about 600. I'm thinking right, right there is my optimum place right there, 540. So I'll start to whittle on this after a while. I have, it's been two days since uh, I've touched this. I, Father's Day and family all up and stuff like that. It's been under a plastic bag. Let's see what it looks like. Well, I don't see anything worse for the wear here. Yeah, there's some checking going on right in here and here. Yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn her down into a, into a outside shape. I might get past this, I don't know. But don't, I guess that's what super glue is good for. So I'm going to get the tool here. I think I'm going to use the, the beaver. John Fisher, one of my subscribers, suggested the uh, eager beaver. And I shortened it to beaver. I think that's very fitting. Uh, it's, it's really not the right tool for this, but I'm going to use it for just a little while to knock down the the, uh, you know the high edges and then I'll, I'll probably either go to a square cutter or a skew start on it. Next up, I'm like about uh, 530 in the RPM.
this is a big heavy piece of wood. It's, it's pretty easy, easy at a low speed to drag the uh, lathe down. It looks like this. It looks like this may be the right tool for the job. It's, it's, uh, it's cutting it down pretty good. I'm gonna come into here now and try to square this just a little bit more to, to uh, you know, maybe to get the balance a little better so I can speed it up. pretty bad when I get up around 600. I gotta slow down a little bit. I gotta get my watch off. I, I keep forgetting it gets under it gets underneath my watch right there and I get a rash every time so I need to keep it off. This is a heavy piece of wood. Still got some squares there. It's still, it's still pretty out of balance. I need to cut it down some more here and, and get into here. I will. Let it roll. It's pretty round on, on here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around to this part right here. And you never will get a big wet blank like this in a natural edge, uh, completely balanced, simply because you got, you know, not not equal amounts up in this area. So I'm going to work on the uh, <coughs> top part now. The truth, I think I'm going to leave this bowl this shape right here. Nice flat bottom, plenty of room for uh, recess or tenon, either one I want. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, see it's going to be natural edge. i got a little tool marks here, but they'll come out. I'm going to go ahead and super put a little uh, CA glue all the way around this bark. Give it plenty of time to sit in there. A little bit roundish out there, but I'll, I'll take that off. Really needed a longer rest here. I, th I think I'll go ahead and do that. Hey, I, I just can't say enough for this tool. Even if, even if I'm, even though I made it myself, it's just, uh, I mean, that's smooth. I mean, that's all it is to it. That's just smooth. And, you know, got a couple of tool marks up here and one right there, but that's on me. That ain't on the tool. So we're gonna, I'm gonna get rid of those and. Uh, I cleaned up the top and then put some super glue on it. I wish I could get a better speed out of it though. Okay, no more tool marks, they're all gone. 
nice and smooth. Got a few on the bottom, but I'm going to work on it quite a bit anyway when I put the... Uh, I'm going to do a double recess and tendon. Tenon, rather. So we'll see what happens there. So I'm going to go get the super glue, put some around there, and then, then I'll take the rest off. I'm going to go ahead and put some right in this area too. See if there's anywhere else. Yeah, I got below the checks. It looks a little funky right in here, but I, it may be okay. I may use it a little bit hardener later. All right, let me go get the super glue and we'll see what we got. This is super glue, my friends. So I'm gonna put a little right in this area. I'm not gonna take the, the uh, outside down anymore. In fact, I think I'm done with the outside, other than sanding. And the reason I'm doing this is that when I start to do the inside, I'm gonna try to uh, minimize popping the bark. And this will, this will minimize it. The only problem is the CA glue is expensive. You're not wasting it though, you're actually saving the bowl. Alright. See if there's any place I need to put a little out here. I already got it here. It looks like we got a right here. Can't hurt anything, that's for sure. White oak's a pretty wood. Okay. I like to let that sit up. All right, I'm gonna have to turn on the uh, dust collector. It's gonna be a little noisy, and I can't talk. But this dish shouldn't take too long anyway. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna put a little bit of uh, tongue oil on the outside and then go take a lunch break and then uh, when I come back, I'll flip it around. It's gonna be a nice size bowl.
this is why I wanted to convert my lathe. Because under the old one, the 500 was a low RPM, and you, you can't do this at, at that uh, 500 RPM. It, it slings you all, all over you. I think I've mentioned before, I had to buy a new pair of glasses. I don't know if it's tunnel oil or what, but it slung it on my glasses, and well, you know the rest. All right, I'll turn this off now and finish the uh, any places that I need to get here. Maybe we need some right in this area. And we get some in the edge of the bark. And after two or three coats of this and sanding it, it'll be uh, it'll be really smooth. It's it's, uh, it's passable now. Yeah, a lot of people would accept this like it is. I would like to get it a little smoother. I didn't hear a lot. This is a little bit on the punky side right in here. I, the tree was dead when I had it cut down, so this is understandable. This is a part of the, this is the main part of the tree, or a half of the main part, it's not a branch. The pith, the pith is right here, of course it's been cut out. But it still has runners, you know, it'll still crack even if you take the pith out. It's not as bad. All right, I think that'll get it. We'll come back in a, an hour or so. And Brandy's gonna go have some popcorn. See you after lunch. Okay, it's uh, it's been about 40, 45 minutes. It's still a little sticky, but I'm still gonna go ahead and turn it around because I'm not gonna do anything out here. Uh, the way I normally do it is I go ahead and, and put the chuck on like this and then I flip it and take the, right, uh, the face plate off. So I'm going to do that now. I don't have a problem going on here. I need a little leverage I think. There we go. Around and put it back on like this. It don't work that way, does it? Okay, we're back on now. Okay, what I always do, whip, I need to get that off first. Whoops. My long screws. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to use a spade bit right here. Uh, unfortunately, it's the only one I have. I'm going to go buy some more because I found out that the spade bits on green wood since 
they, they seem to do better. Uh, I just sharpened this one. I assume I sharpened it right. Um, just like you would a forester bit, you want to, you know, come from the plain side, uh, like so, and just hold it flat, like that on both sides. And you can see, and then it will sharpen it right here. A lot of people will, will, will try to sharpen the bevel, and that, I think that's the wrong procedure. And another thing you need to remember when you use this and you're measuring your diff, this has a very long point. So make sure you you include the point also. All right. Now, you, you need to go slow. You just need to turn it on. Go slow. use this drive center and the reason I am is because this this fits into the hole and basically it works like the forester bit does it it's going to capture it in, in here uh, so even if this lets go it shouldn't come out on it not saying it won't but it shouldn't so, that still can get under there with the banjo so let's come up here close I think I'll back off a little bit to give me a little more working room. Some visible cracks in it now, which it didn't have before. And there's some there, and also right in this area in here. Now I can fix all those with a little sawdust and super glue. And it also has a has a few of them in the bottom. And this is dry, dry, dry. Let me show you what I did. And put a little stool in front of the fan, and then I set the bowl right here, like that. Like that, where the fan blew into it, you know, all night long. I put it on five o'clock yesterday. It is now uh, 
oh, about 2 o'clock the next day. And it definitely has dried it. I, I didn't weigh it or anything. But uh, I'm going to try this on a couple more bowls and it works. Well, then this may be the way I'll dry it from now on because it, it's easy. And uh, it's got a lot of air flowing on all day long or all night. And you know, the moisture has no choice but to leave the vicinity. So let me get that all fixed up. And then uh, when that dries and stuff, I'll sand it back down. Next thing I'm going to do is make, make the ring to go in the bottom with the laser. So when I get when I get that far I'll I'll catch up with you. Okay, I'm gonna use the same technique that I did before. I use some uh, fine shavings, persimmon fine shavings, and I'll I'll rub them in and get some of them. I'll rub them into the crack best I can, like so. And then I will take uh, this skewer with a pointed end and push them in. Really push them in best I can right here. Now I'm also going to do this on the on the inside of, of the same crack. This crack goes all the way through, so it's pretty important. And I'll rub that off right there. And while I've got this up here, I'll go ahead and. Do a little bit on these others. These others are not not very significant, so I'm just going to put a little a bit of the sawdust, I guess you could say, shavings or whatever, into those, and a little bit of pin super glue. This other one, I will go inside and do it. All right, I can do it where to sit up a little better so you can see. Assuming you can see, there you go. I tell you, without this stuff, I'm not sure I could be a successful bow, bow turner. Solves a lot of problems. These have uh, this particular wood has lines running through it, sort of like a like zebra lines or something and, and that it wants to crack fall on those rings. They're not rings, I don't know exactly what they are, but that's, that's where it seems to want to crack, the long bows. Last night I took this bowl and I put a uh, tennis sealer on it, quite heavy, all over it, and I left it overnight. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that comes from the uh, automotive paint industry, for, especially for people like myself who build show cars and so forth. When, when you get a run, everybody gets one every once in a while, the way you take it out, you take a single edge razor blade, such as this right here, and what you do is you take it on the concrete and you direct it like so. Now, you probably can't see it, but you can hear it. Now, you take the opposite side of this, right here, and you use it like you would a scraper on any runs or any uneven parts, such as so. What this does is takes a very even layer off of it and leaves the lower layers. You can see how it's building up here. It's very effective, more so than sandpaper because it doesn't do the, the dips and valleys. It only goes on the top which is right here is, is, a, is a high rough area, like or maybe a little dirt or something's in it, so I will take that out. You can hear it. And after a couple runs of this right here, it is virtually smooth. And it is only taking the high areas out. You can actually see, look, actually see right here where it is pulling it out. If you feel like you're losing your 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 edge, just go back down and make sure and scrape it on the concrete some more on the opposite side and come back. Very effective. 
relatively quick. And this has had a little bit of uh, a dirt in the sealer right here, and it is all gone now. Basically what you're doing is you're taking all the high spots off. And I find this more effective than sandpaper. You just rotate it around, and here again, it's sort of like a real rough feeling right in this area. See here in a second, and the direction is doesn't really matter. It's probably better to go omnidirectional and get it from every angle. But you know, it, it cannot dip down into the valleys. It's only going to take the top off. Feels a little rough right here. This is probably really good for taking care of ingrain problems. Also, if you have any type of, uh, like a little sticky film on the top that's left over from the drying process, this will also take it off. Now that is much, much better right there. Now I'm, all, I'm going to hit this with a little sandpaper in a few minutes. But this, this is to get the, the worst of the worst off. I mean, probably none of us have a dust-free environment. In fact, we create dust like a paint shop would have. So, you know, this, this is a way to, I guess you could say, correct our mistakes. That is amazingly smooth right here. Actually, it probably doesn't even need sanding. You just rotate it around. You can actually hear the roughness as I hit this area, and then you can hear it smooth out. Very effective way to do this. I left the bowl last night sort of sitting on its side and I had a spot that basically the sealer had, had run down and gathered up and this took it off in a heartbeat. Very nice right there. And we'll keep rolling around the rope right in here. And you want to do the entire bowl this way, inside and out Michigan. You can't hardly do curve areas, the flats really work well. What I intend to do with this is, is hit it very lightly with some sandpaper. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna spray it with some polyurethane after I finish the bottom. Which I started it yesterday, but I had my computer doing an update on my GPS, which you know takes several hours and it wouldn't let me it wouldn't let me use it for anything else, so here, what you're seeing that, that is some run super glue. Super glue is a little harder than the sealer, so it has a little harder time taking it out. But it will, it will, it will smooth the top just like everywhere else. There you go. That, that was sort of a high spot there, and it's gone. And let's see where are we here? There we go. There's a spot right there. basically a run right there. And it is gone. Single edge razor blade. Rub it on the concrete to create a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a burr. Create a burr on the opposite side. And then you use it like you would a scraper. Very similar to what you would do on sharpening some of your tools, especially scrapers. All right, that has got that part. Now I'm going to go to this other flat, and that is rough as some cobblestone right there, my friend. During the drying process, what happened was it, uh, it raised the grain a little bit. Listen to that. Now, I could spend a while sanding this, but I would end up going through the sealer in spots closing bare wood and then when I put my finish on it would have a tendency to soak up. There you go. Hear the difference? Just that quick. Excellent tool for taking care of uh, ingrain problems. I know none of us 
sometimes like to do manual work, especially me. But as you can see, this little procedure is extremely effective. All right, that's the outside. Okay, the inside is going to be a little different, but I'll go ahead and do it, and I'm not going to record it. I don't want this video to last into tomorrow. So when I get done with this and, and I get ready to work on the bottom, I'll let you know. I'm just finishing up the laser in here. There you go. And it comes back to the center. I, I don't show how to do all that because I've, you know, I've done it before. But if anybody's interested, look back at my other videos. Here's the end result. Turned out pretty nice. If I had any complaints at all, it would be that it turned the, the bottom is thicker than I wanted it. That was simply because I didn't have a tool rest to reach in far enough without getting a bunch of chatter. So I decided, you know, to stop it there. I don't mind the thick bottom bowl. This one, a little thicker than normal. It probably runs three quarters of an inch. But overall, I think it turned out to be a pretty nice bowl. Got look at the inside. I don't know if you can see it. Try to get it here in the light a little better. A little light right here. And I had somebody tell me that I need to work on my bottoms. So here's the bottom. And I think it turned out pretty nice. It's got my, uh, it's got the ring in there, a little uh, darker wood. It's basically oak with a little stain on it. It's got engraving, it's got my initials, and it says White Oak, June 2016. So, there it is. Not my best work, but not my worst. So, I would really want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you can see your way to subscribe, that would be nice. And also, uh, give me a like. I really don't know what the benefit of having likes and stuff is because I'm, I'm not interested in becoming a paid, paid YouTuber or anything like that. It's just a gratifying thing to know that people appreciate what I do. I don't mind constructive criticism. I just ask that, you know, you be polite with it. I've had a couple of rude ones. Uh, that's okay. They know who they are. I always try to take the high road. So I will see you on the next one. Not real sure what it'll be, but it may be I build another tool rest. I've got everything to do it and, and the know-how. So I may just go ahead and build a tool rest that has about a six, seven inch reach. Right now I've got about a four or five inch reach at the most. So occasionally, as you can see, I, I may need one.